I know there were a series of court cases, but the one that ultimately <coughs> lifted the sanctions against the swearing in of Professor Kithure Kindiki. Yeah, I, I, am, I am yet to see the full text of uh, uh, that decision. But um, I, I want to say that uh, for me, it's not a decision that uh, has surprised me in the sense that um, taking into context everything that has been happening, my position has always been that I feel uh, that um, uh, the court will be more inclined towards uh, lifting um, uh, those conservatory orders. And, 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 and the reason is this, that the process in parliament Howsoever anyone can say was shambolic, and of course there are questions about how that process was conducted. And when I talk about parliament, I mean both houses, uh, parliament and the Senate, which is the trial chamber. There are definitely questions as to how uh, the entire process, impeachment process, was managed. Uh, then thereafter, um, uh, Professor Kindiki was appointed. It went to parliament, it was approved. There might be questions about how that process was done, but it is a fact uh, that um, uh, 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 Rigadi Gashagwa was impeached, and it was also a fact that uh, Kendiki had been appointed as required under the Constitution in terms of the letter of the law and had been approved through a vote in Parliament as required by the Constitution through the letter of the law. So of course there are questions, and those questions are still before the court. So that was the factual position. Uh, the second factual position was that the office was vacant in a manner that you could not tell if there was an issue, who then would assume the office of the deputy president. Let me juxtapose this with, for example, the situation in a place like uh, Meru, where the governor has been impeached but is in office by virtue of an, an order of conservatory order. If for one reason, uh, God forbid, uh, Kawira Mongaza is unable to discharge the functions of that office, we know who automatically takes in, that is the deputy governor. Now in our situation, in the event uh, uh, and I uh, say this for argument purposes, that the president for one reason or another is unable to discharge the functions of his office, who would have taken over? Would it have been Kindiki? Would it have been Gashago? And looking at that scenario in my uh, um, own thinking, I felt that the court would be more inclined towards creating a situation where the answer to that question is certain. The then argument would then become what happens yeah. if then the court were to uh, examine uh, that situation and find that the, uh, the uh, process of impeachment was not conducted properly, the process of appointment of Kindiki was not conducted properly, then what will the court do? And I think that there are remedies that would be available uh, in terms of if you look at the wording of the Constitution that allows the court the power to fashion any kind of order, including uh, the so many orders that we know of, yeah. for purposes of remedying any violation of the Constitution. So looking at that, yeah. I, I, I was always of the feeling and of the view uh, uh, that um, the court is going to uh, lift, lift the, the conservatory, conservatory orders. Right. But let me say this, yeah. that the impeachment of uh, Gashagwa mm. is going to have a lot of consequences. Okay, we'll come to the consequences no, in just I, a bit. It's important for me to yeah. say this because uh, of what Willis has said. And yeah. it has put parliament, it has put Senate on trial, and currently, the judiciary is on trial on this issue. So ultimately, mm. uh, when the final determination is made, uh, as they deliver their verdict, yeah. there will also be a verdict that will be imposed by the Kenyan people on the judiciary. Okay. This will impact the judiciary. Let me hear what Titus has to say. Titus, was this a fair ruling? 